Hello again, Pastor Peter Plagans and Pastor Lucas Fraber here with some uh, take-home question discussion for you. These questions are from this past Sunday, May 2nd. It's the fifth Sunday after Easter under the theme, The Risen Savior Produces Fruit in His Branches. Uh, again, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this goes. It's kind of a new thing we're trying, but we'd love to hear feedback from you. So if you have any ideas on how we can make this more beneficial for you, um, we'd love to hear them. Um, let's just dive right in. So first question that we had, um, reread Acts 4. That was the, the first reading for this Sunday. And make a list of all the different ways the early Christian church bore fruit as branches connected to the vine. And in what ways can we imitate their actions today? I think that section is um, rather well known as, as specifically in, in kind of acts of the, the church and good works that we do. Did you have any uh, ones that jumped out uh, to you when you looked through that those that reading? Well, just uh, you know, you kind of going in order. The whole group of believers was one in heart and soul. That's how it starts out. So there's this unity there of of um, bearing fruit. And just kind of a sneak peek ahead to this Sunday, we're going to talk more about that unity. How the Spirit brings us into one faith and uh, through one baptism in one Lord. But they were one in heart and soul, and that's something that. I think we would especially long for today. You see all this division going on, and, and even in Christian churches, we long for that one in heart and soul aspect. It's a little abstract, but definitely a proof of faith. Just, mm -hmm. And some of that is putting yourself or your opinions aside so that you can enjoy that unity with other people. Um, certainly we hold to God's word, but when it comes to our own opinions or feelings, um, Sometimes sacrificing those is a fruit we can bear for God so that that unity can, can continue. In the next verse, I, I see one that jumps out at me, that the apostles continue to testify about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, witnessing uh, that this is a, a, a perhaps one of the greatest ways we as Christians can, can bear fruit. Not that we would you know, make a, a, a list of which ones are better or worse, but... Um, this is a very direct command that we would go and make disciples of all nations. So um, doing that in, in your own situation, your own uh, 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 circumstances in life, um, definitely a, a fruit that we can bear. Any other one that you've seen there? Yeah, and then the rest of the verses kind of um, speak to, I think the one that would stand out for most people, one, because it takes up the most space in, in the in the verses there, Um but it's also something that's really striking for us in 21st century um, America, 21st century Christendom, um, just the 21st century in general, um, that there was no needy person among them. They were, they were selling lands, they were selling houses, and they were just bringing it to the church. The apostles were kind of the, the figureheads of the church at that time. And uh, we talked about before, before coming on how that seems really unique and really... Um, out there and really special, but throughout the book of Acts, we see that this was this was normal for them in their in their lifestyle as a church that they just kind of found ways to to give back to God, and uh, you know, we we can talk more I guess about how that has it worn off. Is it is it what's what's yeah. the deal? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know. I know. Like personally, I remember growing up when I read this section thinking, wow, that's really radical. Like, we could never do that today. It would never work or fly, like, just in our world. But is that really true? I, I, I sometimes wonder about that. Like, is, is, is that attitude just my own sinful heart, my own materialistic mind saying, I can't give up all of these things that I have because then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have everything I need. But that's really mixing up what I want and what I need. You know, would it be radical for something like this to happen today? I don't think so. Um, I, I think it's something we can even encourage and, and prayerfully consider in our own lives. You know, let's let's think about what we actually need and want. Um, uh, need versus what we want. And then uh, uh, do the, the same thing that they did. You know, give uh, radically. You know, give freely. Give trusting that God will give you what you're, you need. Just what uh, the Lord's Prayer talks about. God, we pray that God give us our daily bread, and we know that he will. And so that allows us to give with that kind of radical heart and attitude. It's kind of a neat example of, of what we're talking about is uh, this past week, Pastor and I had the, had the privilege of being at our, our uh, pastor's conference up in Hayward. 
and we had a report of a mission church that's looking to get started. They, they couldn't find the funds, and so the mission board um, requested or, or set a goal of $20,000 to get this congregation kind of moving forward. And uh, by the time that they were done gathering funds, they had nearly $100,000, and that church was able to not only buy land, but also look to break ground and, and start building a building. Um, is that radical? Maybe, but that's kind of what the Spirit can, can do when we um, look to find ways to glorify God and to um, you know, support the ministry of the church, whether it's at St. Paul's or just as a, as a synod as a whole or any other um, you know, church-affiliated sort of ministry. Um, so just a, a neat example of that, and also closer to home, we, we think about Northland too, um, kind of chipping away at that debt and doing wonderful things with that, and God is, is blessing those efforts as well. Maybe it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the understanding that all of these truths come because we are connected to the vine, that they're done out of gospel motivation, out of love for what Christ has done for us. You know, he's given us everything so we can freely give everything back. Um, like I said, maybe understood, but worth saying too as we consider these two kings of him compared. Let's look at the, the next question then, number two, John 15. In John 15, Jesus identifies himself as the vine and us the branches. How are you as a branch connected to the vine, and how can that connection be strengthened? Thoughts on that one? Yeah, it, I mean, it, you could go about this in a lot of different ways, where we're connected to Jesus through faith, um, through baptism, through his word, through the church, um, we kind of stay connected to the vine through um, fellowship, through worship, through study of the word. I mean, there are a lot of different ways, but it all kind of comes back to um, the word, doesn't it? I mean, even when you're talking about the sacraments, those sacraments get the power from the word. When you're talking about fellowship, there's certainly a benefit to just kind of getting together and having fun with other Christians or doing life together. But that's there. It always comes back to we're Christians, right? So we are centered on the Word. We are centered on Christ and what He's done for us. Um, so I kind of, I guess I answered both a little bit. But anything well, else? <laughs> I th you're right to put the focus there, and it's easy for it to come off of the Word too. Um, and we, I mean, we can kind of see that in, in the history of Christianity too, as other church bodies and what they put their emphasis or focus on. Um, and, you know, praise God that we are able to, to keep our focus always on his word. Um, you know, that's something that never changes. It, it's not going to uh, uh, not gonna change for us, um, but to always go back to that and to always find that connection to your Savior there. Um, right? But that, like you said, can come in so many different ways you know, through the sacraments or through worship or, or through personal devotions and Bible studies or, or encouragement from other Christians as they share the word with you. God has been very rich with giving us uh, uh, and supporting us um, in this endeavor and staying connected. Yeah, it's it's neat too. You you referenced I think it was Psalm one in your sermon how the the man of God is like a, a tree planted by streams of water and how often the word is referred to as like water or something that's refreshing or nourishing. Um, and Jesus himself calls himself the water of life. But you think of Psalm twenty three. He leads me by streams of water. He leads me to green pastures, all these things that are good for us and nourish us. And you can take that and, and connect it to the picture of the vine and the branches, how we get all of our nourishment and strength from Jesus and his word. And we hear about what he's done for us through that word and uh, reminded of all the promises that we have through the sacraments as well. So um, just kind of neat, uh, an extra layer there that I know in a sermon you don't really get much time to delve into, mm -hmm. but uh, in, in a conversation like this, just something that if you're interested at home too, you could look at you know, how many ways does Jesus show us that he's, he's there to nourish us, um, to give us the things that we need. And he very often uses like bodily pictures, the bread of life, water of life, um, resurrection and life. Um, so. And I think it's, it's maybe a good perspective shift for, for us as Christians. Uh, maybe it's just me, but whenever I, I am thinking about um, like reading my Bible every day or a personal devotion or even like worshiping, um, it's always something that, you know, okay, I, I, I got to do this. You know, I, I got to to set 
you know, time in my schedule so that I can go read the Bible and do this thing for God. When really, that's a, it's a really subtle way that my sinful heart is turning my focus towards me and this action that I am doing for God. Um, when just what you were saying, this is nourishment that God wants to give to us. He wants to feed you by reading and studying his scripture. Um, you know, you, we talk about that in, in Bible information class with the sacraments, right? This is not a, something that we do for God, but something God does for us. This is a, a one-way street of, of God coming down to us. The same in his word as we study it. Um, so always keep the, the focus um, on what God is doing for us, not necessarily on, on what we're doing for God. Okay. All right, let's, let's keep moving. We're on to number three. Based on John 15... How does God produce more fruit in us? Uh, right in the, the opening verses, um, in verse 2, so every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he is going to cut off. And he prunes every branch that does bear fruit so that it will bear more fruit. So that pruning is the action where we're thinking about here. Reflect on your life as a Christian. What are some ways God may be pruning you? So that you can bear more fruit. And what are some possible examples of more fruit you can bear? So, uh, in in your sermon, you had talked about how pruning can be a painful process. That you you might think that it's not necessary. Um, and taking a shears to a branch, I mean, that cuts something. When we get cut physically, that's something that hurts us. Um, but God does this for our benefit. So just thinking about how has God uh, or what are some ways that God may be pruning us? Um, think about just in general the theology of the cross, how the Christian's life is not one of, of ease or convenience or glory or grandeur or fame, but it's one of, of hardship, and it's typified by that. It's, it's exemplified by the cross. Jesus tells us in so many ways, um, you will have trouble in this world, but take heart. I have overcome the world by my cross. Um, that whoever wants to uh, save his life will lose it. Whoever wants to, uh, yeah, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever wants to lose his life will save it. No, yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, a yeah, paraphrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the idea is the same, right? There's the cross. There's that hardship aspect, and uh, I'm not getting into specifics, but maybe you can take that. And... Yeah, um, I, it's all. You're right to focus on these difficulties on the cross. Um, and I think what, one thing that jumps out at me is a lot of times these can be good things in life, you know, maybe blessings that God has given us, like uh, um, work. You know, this is a, a godly thing, but sometimes, you know, job loss might happen. Um, maybe it's it's loved ones, like a, a spouse or, or family members. You know, these are absolutely blessings from God. Um, you know, the, the Bible has so many passages that talk about children as a blessing um, but yet sometimes you know those those blessings are, are taken away and that cuts that hurt that's what you were saying um, but yet in that in that pain and in that bearing of a cross you know then we can bear more fruit whether it's it's we trust that God knows what he's doing that his plan really is what's best for us um, whether it's Know, looking to 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 uh, uh, other ways you can serve, uh, you know maybe if, if you know have more time on your hands or something like that. God is giving you these kind of opportunities to, to recognize those around you. Um, it's it's easy to to take on a worldly perspective when those difficulties happen to get upset with God, to to become frustrated with Him, to doubt His plan. Um, but in that little way, just the attitude of your heart. Um, is is a, a perfect example of a fruit um, that we can bear um, to not take on that worldly perspective, but to take, take on a biblical perspective um, that you know God knows what He's doing. Um, just as you know, the the gardener uh, is the one who, who has all the knowledge, all the skill. He knows what's best for the vine. Uh, same for us. God knows what He's doing. He's He's pruning us for good. Yeah, and I think. We can often jump to like the the most the most drastic step, and it's it's not wrong to do that. Like if you would lose something, but even if you have hardship in dealing with that blessing, or in in receiving that blessing, let's say 
of you having a tough time at home with whoever it is. Um, home life is not um, perfect right now. <laughs> it never will be, but that that's a way that God is giving you an opportunity to bear fruit, um, to bear more fruit there because he's He's allowing that hardship to come into your life. Maybe you're not getting along with people at work or, or the workload is just getting more and more and more. Um, there are always opportunities for God to be glorified in hardship. Um, because what does Paul say? When I am weak, then I am strong. God is glorified in our weakness. Um, his grace is sufficient for us. In so many ways, Paul, who had so many hardships come into his life, um, saw that the weakness of his flesh or the, or the cross that he would bear was a way that God could be glorified. And so even if it's those, those what we might say, small inconveniences, um, those are ways that we can still bear fruit in uh, really what Pastor Plagan said, the, the, um, the mindset, the attitude toward God, thankfulness. Um, how can I praise God in this storm? Um, things like that. Mm -hmm. And you brought up a good point before we, we started recording, too, just that of vocation, that, you know, that attitude or even those actions, too, if you carry it on to that step, um, takes shape in so many different ways. You know, every, it's going to be different from everyone. Everyone's in a different life circumstance. Everyone has different roles and responsibilities. But within those things, um, then those are, are different areas we can bear fruit. Um, like you said, that's that's going to be, be different for everyone. But, um, you know, there are, are similarities as well that, you know, we are all part of the body of Christ. So we all have that vocation. You know, we, um, maybe, maybe parents, um, you know, that of a, a father or a mother and training up children. Maybe as children, and, and, uh, that, that giving obedience and, and, and love and respect to parents, you know, all these different things as, as being a, a faithful employee or, or employer. Um, Luther does a great job of, of pointing out all of these things you know, in, in the catechism. And, um, maybe a, a plug for that to, to <laughs> reread some of his, his thoughts in there. Um, let's let's jump into the, the last one, number four, which kind of ties into the third one a little bit. Um, hearing verses like John 15, 7 and 1 John 3, 22 may lead our sinful hearts to greed and selfishness. Can I just read those real quick? Yes, please right. do. So John 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And 1 John 3, 22 we also receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. Right. So it's just the, the fact, you know, if, if, if you pray for something, you know, then you'll get it. Right. Um, and that, <laughs> I think, is easy. I remember thinking this way as a kid. You know, I, I had a long, for a long time, had a hand-me-down bike that was small and pink, and I was getting taller and didn't want a pink bike. So I was praying for, for a, a, a different bike. And even more so in, in 1 John 3, 22, because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight. So if, if I'm a good boy <laughs> right. and then I pray for this this extravagant thing, maybe I'll get it. Right, exactly. Or and God has to give it to me, that sort of thing. Right. So. It's like the, the key to life. If you want to succeed in life, you just have to, to obey what God does. Then you're going to get these good things. Yeah. That's that's a, a coming from the root of greed and a sinful heart. However, what is the prayer of a branch that's bearing fruit? Hint, read Matthew 26, verse 39b. How does this connect with us bearing fruit? Yeah, this verse from Matthew, I think, is one that um, is rather uh, 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 telling when we think about kind of our own sinful hearts a little bit there. So a lot of you might know the setting of this, but this is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane getting ready to go to the cross. He said, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Right. So as we think about the prayer of a branch that's bearing fruit, right? They're connect that branch is connected to the vine, so they always are, are driven by the vine and what uh, the vine wants. And so in the practical application of prayer, our prayer is always that, God's will be done. Not our will, but that God's will be done. Yeah, there's a reason it shows up in the Lord's Prayer. There's a reason that Jesus made that part of his model prayer. Um, that every time we would pray it, whether it's in worship, whether it's at home, whether it's before we go to bed or when we wake up, that we would pray 
and that Jesus would have us pray, Lord, your will be done. Um, and, and maybe that's just a, a reminder for me, I know it is, that not to just go through the motions of, oh, I have this prayer memorized, I can just go through it. It's a nice prayer to remember, but it, it, is, it has such, uh, such important things attached to it that we would pray that God's will be done in our lives in this world. And we know that it is, ultimately, because God is all-powerful, all all-knowing, but that we would pray for that, that even in our, um, in our requests to God, and he certainly says to bring all our requests to him, no matter how big or small we think they are, but then at the end of it, it's always, your will be done, Lord. We know, I know, that you're going to do what's best for me, um, that you're going to give me the opportunities you want to give me, that you're going to um, put the right people in my life, you know, whatever you want to say, um, and your will will be accomplished. Right. And the, the cool connection that has to bearing fruit is that, you know, God answers that prayer sometimes through you. Right. So we're praying that God's will be done. Um, but part of God's will, just from what we read and have talked about, is... Uh, that we bear fruit. And we know what that fruit is by what God says in his word, uh, by, by loving him and loving neighbor. Uh, you know, the, the, all of the law summarized in these two statements. And so this is what we do to bear fruit. Um, but then, uh, you know, part of that bearing fruit is praying that God's will be done. But then again, he, he does that will through us by bearing fruit. It's, it's this circle where God is, is using us as his tools to accomplish his will, and, and if we are always connected to the vine, connected to his word, uh, which reveals to us his will, then we can continue to bear fruit. Yeah, so maybe some specific application. Uh, we talked about, you touched on vocation just a little bit ago, and how we all have these different hats that we wear, and many times we wear different hats all at once, um, that you're a spouse and a parent, and a citizen, and a worker, and a worshiper, all at once. Um, that you go through the week and you do all of those things. And I think, um, you know, sometimes this is a little unrelated, but I'll bring it back. That we we feel like we have to take one hat off in order to put the other hat on, but we can actually wear multiples at once. So, for instance, bearing fruit as a parent. What does it mean to be a faithful fruit-bearing parent? Um, to tell your children about Jesus, isn't it? That's one of the that that is the main thing that God. Uh, encourages parents to do, raise children up in the way of the Lord. But then we also have different things where we want to be, um, you know, good parents in our society. We want to have our kids be knowledgeable in, in, the, in like math, science, you know, those things, but also let, let our kids have fun with baseball and with other sports and things like that. So um, that's where knowing what God's will is helps us carry out our vocations. Not that... Um, we want to create tiers of what's a better vocation and what's a worse vocation, but ultimately, what what is God's will, and that'll help us determine what is most important in our lives. Um, and and again, not on a tiered basis, because um, Luther, you brought up Luther and vocation, he would highlight that a, a faithful mother at home or a faithful farmer out on the field, if they are doing what they are doing um, with with thankfulness in their heart. They're doing just as much as a priest observing the, the Mass or the Lord's Supper um, on, a, on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so even though we can, we can talk in a way of, of what's most important and what's least or what's not as important, it's still uh, that, that heart aspect, that motivation behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what God is after, the hearts. Right. All, it all kind of bleeds together, right? <laughs> that, um, you know, as, as I you know, want to, to be a faithful dad and to spend time with kids, uh, you know, like you said, the best way we can do that is by, by training up a child in the way they should go. Um, and, you know, Deuteronomy comes to mind too. You know, talk about these things all the time as you walk along the road, as you sit down mm -hmm. at the table, um, you know, bind them on, on your forehead and on your, your hand. Yeah, just to take that a little further, you can use all these different things in life to... Um, teach children to teach children about society, about our godly place in society, teach children how when they play, when they uh, compete, they can use that as a way to glorify God, how when they study, when they take tests, when they do homework, when they go to school, they can use those as opportunities to glorify God and to, to love their neighbor mm -hmm. and to uh, obey God's commands accordingly. So that's just 
a side mission. Right. Yeah. Um, and to always keep, you know, our, our focus on the word of on what His will is, right? And and that's where we draw what we do in our life, you know, even from a day to day basis. Um, you know, having Him as a top priority in life and all of these different vocations, right? We don't, like you said, we're not pitting one against the other, but um, taking all of what God says in His Word and applying it to all of these different aspects, all of which are from God. You know, the good works that God has created in advance for us to do, so we might just do His work in full. And the way we keep all of that in mind is by staying connected to the Word, right? And so I'm going to, we, we've, we've said time and time again, we're not going to pit one against the other, but staying connected to God's Word is like the most important vocation we have. Mm-hmm. I, I think I can say it. <laughs> and, and just in everything, we're not going to know what God's will is if we're not looking where God reveals his will in his word. And sure, we can read it maybe once a week, but wouldn't it be even better to, to know it every day, to have that reminder every day, uh, not to make it a legalistic requirement or anything like that, but just to, to look back at what um, we were saying earlier, that God wants to bless us through his word. He doesn't want us to be um, overwhelmed by it in a negative way. He doesn't want us to be um, to look at it as though it's something we have to check off the list. He just wants to bless us through it, mm-hmm. and he certainly does. Uh, we, we know that through our experiences. We know that through what he tells us. Yeah, any final words? If, if you have a, are these questions are bearing fruit? I don't think so. Going through our list of what we talked about, I think we covered everything. We should write this down. We should. (laughs) All these. We're seeing. We're figuring this out. Um, Thank you again for for listening. Again, if you have any ideas, uh, uh, feedback on how we can make it uh, better, easier to access, or or more beneficial for you, uh, let us know. All right. See you next time.